A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy for the date 11th of July 2022. So displayed here are the list of news articles chosen for today's discussion. We have five different news articles. So now without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. It says that Indian Oil Corporation Limited has introduced extra green diesel. See it is a more eco friendly variant as it has a lower sulfur content than regular diesel the variant also offers higher fuel economy and reduced noise and according to the news article it is priced 3 rupees more than the high speed diesel that is hsd which is more commonly used so this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us understand more about this extra green diesel See as we already saw IOCL has rolled out a cleaner and greener fuel called the extra green diesel so now let us briefly see the need for greener fuels in today's world see greener fuels are carbon neutral they are even considered as carbon free alternatives to fossil fuels they are seen as a crucial to decarbonize heavy industries in the future So now coming back to the extra green diesel see according to Indian Oils R&D department the new extra green diesel uses a modified diesel multifunctional additive that is DMFA this DMFA offers several benefits over the regular diesel so now you may wonder what is this additive see the characteristics of diesel fuel can be improved through the use of additives which are added at the refinery at the distribution terminal or by the end user so in simple terms something is added to the diesel which improves the characteristics of diesel fuel so those materials are called as additives and i have given some of the examples of additives here just go through it you don't have to memorize it just know these are the examples of additives added in the diesel to improve its quality for example fuel handling and distribution additives fuel stability additives engine protection additives and combustion additives now coming to the extra green diesel see this is nothing but a modified dmfa which we saw already by using this modified dmfa it improves fuel economy by 5 to 6 percentage reduces carbon dioxide emission then it reduces carbon monoxide emission by 5.29 percentage and nox emissions by 4.99 percentage and as per the article it is also said that extra green has higher cetane number compared to conventional diesel here cetane number is the measure of the ignition value of a diesel fuel the higher the cetane number the more easily the fuel can be ignited So according to the news article the new extra green diesel has increased cetane number by 5 points which has resulted in improved lubricity reduced engine noise and excellent corrosion protection and finally it is also said that extra green is in sync with the prime minister's commitment to steer india towards a greener tomorrow which includes constant reduction of carbon emission and gradual achievement of the net zero goals by 2070 so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw about a cleaner and greener fuel which is rolled out by iocl that is indian oil corporation limited we saw that extra green diesel uses a modified dmfa that is diesel multifunctional additive which offers several benefits over the regular diesel then we saw some of the benefits associated with the extra green diesel so these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion have a look at this news article this news article is with reference to koya tribes See according to the news article the tents and huts of uh, koya tribes were removed by a personnel from forest department in telangana the forest department said that the land in which koya tribes stays was forest land under the kaval tiger reserve but the tribes re-erected their temporary shelters at the same site so this is the crux of the news article given here so in this context let us learn some of the important details about koya tribes which will be very helpful for your preliminary examination firstly know that koya tribe is the largest adivasi tribe of telangana and listed as scheduled tribe in telangana the community is spread across telugu speaking states of telangana and andhra pradesh the koyas are mainly inhabiting the hilly areas of west godavari east godavari kammam 
and Warangal districts and are sparsely found in Adilabad and Karimnagar districts. See, Koyas popularly call themselves as Dorala Sattam and Putta Dora. Here, Dorala Sattam means Lord's group and Putta Dora means original Lord's. Koyas call themselves Koitur in their dialect. See, though strongly influenced by neighboring Telugu speaking people, they retain the typical classical trait of Koya culture. Koyas live in some part of East Godavari have forgotten their own Koya dialect and adopted Telugu as their mother tongue. The rest of the Koyas found in Polavaram area of West Godavari district, they speak Koya. Now talking about their lifestyle, see nuclear and monogamous families are predominantly found. Marriage among Koyas take place after attainment of puberty and cross cousin marriages are also encouraged. Apart from this, leverate is socially accepted. Here, leverate marriage is nothing but a type of marriage in which the brother of a deceased man is obligated to marry his brother's widow. To simply put, a widow should marry her dead husband's brother. Marriage by negotiation is the most preferred mode of acquiring mates in modern times among Koyas. Apart from this, monogamy is the general practice among Koyas, though polygamy is also socially accepted. See, the descent is through male line only. Koya woman is industrious and she is an economic asset to the family. The woman attends to all agricultural operations except ploughing. Now, talking about their occupation, see, the Koyas are mainly settled cultivators. They grow jowar, ragi, Bajra and other millets. Most of the Koyas who are living in the middle of forest collect tubers and roots and edible green leaves and prepares curries for their domestic consumption. Their land are very fertile due to periodical floods of Godavari in the Koya habitat. Now talking about their worship pattern. See, Lord Bhima, Kora Rajalu, Mamili and Pottu Raju are the important deities to Koyas. Their main festivals are Viji Pandu and Kondala Kolupu. See, Viji Pandu is a seed charming festival and Kondala Kolupu is a festival to appraise hill deities. And remember, Koyas perform a robust, colorful dance called Permakok Ata, which is also called Bison Horn Dance. They perform this during festivals and marriage ceremonies. Medaram Jatara is the second largest fair of India after the Kum Mela, celebrated by the Koya tribe for four days. See here, you really don't have to by heart all these names. You can just go through the names and revise it one or two times so that you can easily eliminate options in your preliminary examination. Because sometimes UPSC might ask questions like mentioning some of the terms related to the tribe and ask you to answer to which tribe those terms are related to. So just for that sake, you can just note these terms and revise one or two times. So now coming back, Koyas, they either bury or cremate the dead. In case of children or pregnant women, the corpse is buried while the corpse of others is cremated. Only clan members carry the corpse to the burial ground. So that's all about this news article discussion. In this news article discussion, we saw in detail about Koya tribes. We saw about their inhabitant areas. Then we saw about their language. Then we saw about their lifestyle. And we finished by seeing some of their festivals and deities they worship. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. According to the article, the Tamil Nadu BJP has adopted a resolution urging the centre to posthumously confer the Bharat Ratna on Nammalwar for his contributions to environment and organic farming. So in this context, let us learn about Bharat Ratna from prelims point of view. See, Bharat Ratna is the highest civilian award of the country. It was instituted in the year 1954 and any person without distinction of race, occupation, position or sex is eligible for this award. So remember, it is awarded in recognition of exceptional service or performance of the highest order in any field of human endeavor. Also remember the recommendations for Bharat Ratna are made by the Prime Minister himself to the President. 
here note that no formal recommendations for this are necessary the number of annual awards is restricted to a number of 3 in a particular year on confirmation of the award the recipient receives a sanad which is nothing but a certificate signed by the president and a medallion also remember the award does not carry any monetary grant so here one of the most important point that you have to note is that as per article 18 clause 1 of the indian constitution awardees cannot use bharat ratna as a prefix or suffix to their name article 18 clause 1 means this condition is one among the fundamental rights provided however they can add prefix or suffix like awarded bharat ratna by the president or recipient of bharat ratna award in their bio data visiting card letterhead etc also know that it was first awarded in 1964 to three persons so who are they they are dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan dr c v raman and chakravarti rajagopalachari see the award was started by former president dr rajendra prasad on january 2nd of 1954 the bharat ratna can also be awarded to non indians as there is no written rule against the same for example mother teresa naturalized indian citizen was conferred with the award in 1980 some of other examples include non indians like khan abdul ghafar khan and nelson mandela have also been awarded with the bharat ratna so here make note of this point the award was not conferred posthumously at first but that criteria was changed in 1966 the youngest bharat ratna awardee and the first sports person to win the award was sachin tendulkar in 2014 so just now we have discussed that a maximum of 3 bharat ratnas can be given each year right but it was awarded to four people in the same year in 1999 So this was the only instance where four persons were awarded Bharat Ratna in a single year. In 1992, the government decided to award Shubhas Chandra Bose with the Bharat Ratna, but the decision was criticized due to controversy about his death. So that was the only time when the award was announced and later withdrawn. So these are all some of the important facts that you have to know about Bharat Ratna. since it is the highest civilian award of the country and as per article 18 clause 1 of the indian constitution awardees cannot use bharat ratna as a prefix or suffix to their name so because of these importance knowing about bharat ratna becomes very important so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion This text and context article is about another fight in a long running scuffle between Indian government and Twitter. See since last year the two entities that is Twitter and the Indian government have been arguing on blocking contents and accounts on the social media platform Twitter. So in this discussion let us see about what the issue is the arguments put forward by government of India and Twitter and then we'll also see what gives Indian government the power to block contents on the social media before that the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference please go through it see what happened in the last year was government of India asked Twitter to block certain accounts or contents and initially Twitter blocked it but later it revoked the blocking saying that they were not in violation of its policy so outraged by this government of india issued a formal notice saying that twitter has to comply with its order or has to face penal actions so like this fight has been going on between the two entities and now the reason problem is twitter has filed a petition in karnataka high court in these petitions it has sought two things first is to set aside multiple blocking orders of the central government second is to alter the directions of government of india twitter demanded that the directions should only order to identify and block specific violative content rather than imposing a blanket ban on individual accounts so all these has put the focus back on government of india's power to block online content before seeing what gives government of india this power you need to understand that the internet or web hosting service providers and other intermediaries have to cooperate with authorities in certain circumstances it is mandated under india's information technology that is it act of 2000 here the act covers all intermediaries who play a role in the use of computer resources and electronic records according to the act 
any intermediary includes telecom service providers network service providers internet service providers web hosting service providers search engines etc so as per the act such intermediaries have to comply with indian authorities now let us come back to blocking content here the power is provided under section 69a of it act so now the second section of focus is section 69a central government can direct any agency of the government or even any intermediary to block for access by the public regarding any information that is generated transmitted received stored or hosted in any computer resource and remember this can only be done in case of certain grounds the grounds include five conditions first is in the interest of the sovereign or integrity of india second in the defense of india third is with respect to security of the state fourth is in the interest of friendly relations with foreign states or in the interest of public order or for preventing incitement to the commission of any cognizable offence so based on these grounds only government asked twitter to block those accounts not that having the power to block does not mean unrestricted power make note of this point because the central government has to record the reasons for above directions that too in writing also if the intermediary does not comply with order then they can be punished with imprisonment for 1 to 7 years plus fine now this section has to be read with information technology procedure and safeguards for blocking for access of information by public rules 2009 see these rules were notified to provide the procedure and safeguards in case of blocking access as per 69a so according to the rules two authorities play a major role in the procedure of blocking one is the designated officer that is do he or she has the power to issue direction on behalf of the central government for blocking access to any information in any computer resource second is the examination committee see the committee is headed by the do it will examine the content that is requested to be blocked so it is understood that do issues directions to block after examination by this committee so here as per rules 8 the do has the power of identifying the originator of such content that is the person or intermediary that has hosted the alleged content when the originator is identified then will be asked to present before the examination committee and provide their side of reply and clarification behind hosting the alleged content then after hearing the clarification the do decides on the matter on whether to block the content or not the decision will be implemented based on the approval from the secretary in the department of it under the ministry of communication so the final deciding authority will be the secretary this is the procedure for blocking of content under general circumstances but but the procedure may vary in case of emergency circumstances see as per rules 9 in case of emergency nature where no delay can be accepted here the do with the approval of secretary can give an interim direction to block the information or content but here the secretary has to record the reasons for such blocking in writing now after issuing interim direction the do has to bring the direction to the notice of examination committee within 48 hours then the interim direction is examined by the committee and it gives recommendation depending on the recommendation now the secretary will give the final order to either continue blocking of content or even unblocking the content so in case of emergency the originator of the alleged content is not given opportunity to be heard before blocking the content why because the examination committee comes into play only after the interim order is passed so you can understand that it act and rules provides enormous powers to the indian government and authorities to intervene regarding any information hosted in a computer resource now based on these powers government argues that all the intermediaries in india have the obligation to comply with indian laws this is stated because according to government certain tweets in twitter are disturbing the public order so it has given orders to block as i already said twitter is of different opinion in such matter 
Firstly, it argues that those tweets do not violate the rules of Twitter and they are just as per the right of free expression. So, the contention between Government of India and Twitter is what constitutes free expression and what constitutes harm to public order. So, this is the first argument put forward by the Twitter. Second, it also mentions that the blocking orders were not procedurally and substantially compliant with section 69A of IT Act. This is because according to Twitter, the central government has not shown why the restriction or blockings were necessary in the interest of public order or for any other reason. But we know as per section 69A, reasons have to be recorded in writing. So here government is in clear violation of section 69A. So, this is the second argument put forward by the Twitter. Third argument of Twitter is, citing emergency circumstances, government blocks content without giving the originator of such content an opportunity to explain. And even under non-emergency circumstances, the opportunity to be heard is not given as per Rules 8 according to Twitter. So, this again is the violation of Section 69A and the IT rules. Fourth argument is, if one tweet is violating the rules and norms, the whole account of the originator is blocked. This should be changed. Rather, only the tweet should be blocked. Here, the argument is, if the account itself is blocked, then it means that the government is assuming that the originator will harm public order through potential future contents. So, this raises the question of applicability of IT Act. That is, whether it is applicable to future contents also. So, these are some of the arguments of Government of India and Twitter and we have to wait and see how the High Court decides in this matter. So, in this news article discussion, we saw about a petition filed by Twitter in Karnataka High Court. The petition sought two things. First, to set aside multiple blocking orders of the central government. Second, is to alter the directions of Government of India. Then, we understood that the IT Act and rules provides enormous powers to the Indian government and authorities to intervene regarding any information hosted in a computer resource. And then we saw some of the arguments in the government side and some of the arguments put forward by Twitter. So with these learnt points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. The news article here mentions about the 5th BRICS media forum that was held recently. In this media forum, an action plan was released. The action plan focused on supporting and facilitating BRICS media organizations through a range of initiatives like joint training of journalists and etc. So, from exam angle, let us know about BRICS briefly. See, BRICS is a grouping consisting of five major emerging countries. They are Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. So, each letter in BRICS represents a country. That is B for Brazil, R for Russia, I for India, C for China and S for South Africa. Originally, it started as BRIC that is BRIC, which became a formal grouping in 2006 after the meeting of the leaders of Russia, India and China. The acronym BRIC was coined by Goldman Sachs in 2001 to indicate that the four powers along with the USA will be five largest economic powers in the world in the 21st century. Later, South Africa joined the grouping in 2010 and then BRIC became BRICS. Overall, the countries have sought to establish fairest international governance which should be more suitable to their national interest. And displayed here are its three pillars. Just go through it. You can use these points in your main answer writing as a value addition. Note that as of 2019, BRICS economies comprised 41% of the world population having 24% of the world GDP and over 16% share in the world trade. Now, since 2006, dialogues have been happening between BRIC countries. But from 2009, the meetings take place at annual meetings of heads of state and government of BRICS countries. These annual meetings are called the BRICS Summit. In other words, the BRICS Summit are conducted annually. The first summit happened in Russia in 2009. The first summit after the inclusion of South Africa happened in 2011. But this summit 
in 2011 is still called as third BRICS summit in the official platforms. One of the important summits is the Fortaleza summit of 2014. At this summit, two important institutions were created. One is New Development Bank, that is NDB, and the other is Contingent Reserve Arrangement, that is CRA. NDB was set up to implement the efforts of multilateral and regional financial institutions for global development and thus contributing to collective commitments for achieving the goal of strong, sustainable and balanced growth. And the CRA is an important financial stability mechanism for countries affected by balance of payment crisis. So as a whole, in all these years, the sectoral cooperation under the grouping has widened and the most prominent areas of cooperation are economy, finance, health, science, technology and innovation, security and business. Also note that BRICS group has annually rotating chairship among its members. India served as the chair in 2012, 2016 and 2021. The current chair in 2022 is China. Finally, just know that the BRICS media forum mentioned in the news article was established in 2015 by media organizations from the five countries. This include India's The Hindu, Brazil's CMA group, Russia's Sputnik, China's Xinhua and South Africa's independent media. So these are some of the important facts that you have to remember about BRICS. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is the preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question. This question is about Koya tribes. Consider the following pairs. So here famous tribes are given on the left side and the state are given on the right side. Now look at this first pair. It is Koya, Telangana. Second pair, Todas, Maharashtra. Third pair, Chenchus, Arunachal Pradesh and fourth pair, Lepchas, Sikkim. How many pairs given above are correctly matched? Option A, only one pair. Option B, only two pairs. Option C, only three pairs. And option D, all four pairs. See, the correct answer for the question is option B, only two pairs. Pair one is correct because in our discussion itself, we saw that Koya tribes, they inhibit Telangana. So this pair is correct. Pair two is incorrect because Toda people or a Dravidian ethnic group live in the Nilgiri mountains of the Indian state of Tamil Nadu. So this pair is incorrect. So moving on to pair three. Pair three is also incorrect because the Chenchus, they are Dravidian tribe and they are designated scheduled tribe in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. Telangana, Karnataka and Odisha. They are an aboriginal tribe whose traditional way of life been based on hunting and gathering. So this pair is incorrect. Pair 4 is correct because Lepcha is a tribe of Himalayan range. They live at the northeast corner of India. They largely reside at Sikkim, Mehalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, Bhutan and Darjeeling. They have also migrated in other northeastern states for economic reasons. So the correct answer for the question is option B, two pairs only because pair two and three are incorrect and pair one and four are correct. So moving on to second question. This question is about Bharat Ratna. Consider the following statements. Statement 1, 48 eminent personalities have received Bharat Ratna so far. Statement 2, as per Article 18, 1 of the Indian Constitution, awardees cannot use Bharat Ratna as a prefix or suffix to their name. Which of the statements given above is or or correct? Option A, 1 only. Option B, 2 only. Option C, both 1 and 2. And option D, neither 1 nor 2. See, the correct answer for the question is both 1 and 2. Statement 1 is correct because Yes, of course, 48 individuals have received this award so far. So, statement 1 is correct. Statement 2 is also correct. As per Article 18.1 of the Indian Constitution, awardees cannot use Bharat Ratna as a prefix or suffix to their name. So, this we saw in our discussion itself, right? So, the correct answer for the question is option C, both 1 and 2. Now, moving on to the third question. BRICS established which of the following? Statement 1, Asian Development Bank. Statement 2, New Development Bank. Statement 3, Contingent Reserve Arrangement. And Statement 4, Asia Pacific Economic Corporation. Select the correct answer from the code given below. Option A, 1, 3 and 4 only. Option B, 2 and 4 only. Option C, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And Option D, 
2131D. See, the correct answer for the question is option D, 2131D. See, Asian Development Bank is incorrect option. ADB was conceived in the early 1960s as a financial institution that would be Asian in character and foster economic growth and cooperation in one of the poorest region in the world. It was established in 1966, so it was established way before BRICS, which comes in 2006 only. So ADB has grown to encompass 68 members of which 48 are from then Asia and the Pacific and 19 outside. So statement 1 will not be in the answer. So you can eliminate option A and option C. Now coming to option 4. Option 4 is also incorrect because Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC it is a regional economic forum established in 1989 to leverage the growing interdependence of the Asia Pacific. APEC has 21 members its aim is to create greater prosperity for the people of the region by promoting balanced inclusive sustainable innovative and secure growth and by accelerating regional economic integration so four will also not be in the answer so if you know statement one and four will not be in the answer you can easily arrive at the answer the correct answer for the question is option d two and three only we saw about a new development bank and contingent reserve arrangement in the discussion so now moving on to the quiz question for today this question is about extra green diesel see this question is very simple question if you had listened to the analysis properly you could easily arrive at the correct answer comment the correct answer i will say whether your answer is right or wrong so displayed here is the main question for today's discussion see answer writing is very important in your preparation don't fail to right answer each day trust me it will reap a lot of benefits to you if you write answers every day so don't worry we'll assist you in your progress you can post your answers in the comment section you can just type your answer in the comment section or you can just scan your answer paper upload it in your drive and share the link in the comment section so that we can correct your answer paper so use it wise you can either type it on the comment section or you can share the drive link in the comment section people who watch the video can also comment and give suggestions to the answers so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankara is academy youtube channel thank you